This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 236 of the Dressage Radio Show on the Horse Radio Network, brought to you by Fleeceworks, EasySignsOnline.com, and Equiscratch. This is Reese Koffler Stanfield from Georgetown, Kentucky. And this is Philip Parks from Fergus, Ontario, and you're listening to the Dressage Radio Show. With our producer, he's back, Glenn. Yay! Hey guys, I missed you. It's been a I while. I missed you we guys missed you for too. Sure. Jeez, it's been it a, does feel. And I was so excited about tonight because we're gonna we're gonna do a little gift buying episode. And, and I used to own a tack shop, so uh, this is partial. I'm partial, and I you know consulted <laughs> with some major retail companies in this space. So I, I like product. It's gonna be fun. I know. I like it too. I actually took a survey from everybody. I'm at convention. Can USDF convention is here in Lexington. And I was having lunch with a big group of people. And I said, Hey, come on, stop. We got to think about this. Give me some products that you like. So that's how I got my list. So oh, I'm excited cool. to share. Yeah. Oh, you, you did a survey. She did a I science. Did a survey. Did, you did a market was, research <laughs> thing. I did right? a market research at convention at lunchtime. You never know what happens <laughs> during lunch at convention. Gee, she's probably going to charge me extra for this week's hosting now because she had to do market research. Well, maybe all the contributors, right? Idea. We'll start. We'll yeah. yeah. Great. Good idea. I love it. So, Philip, Philip, how'd you get your list? Um, I just thought of it and then I made it up in my head. <laughs> no market love research. No market, no market research. research. Yeah. I was just, you know, as I go through my day, I was like, what are the things that you know, that I use every day or the things that I really like to have around and, uh, you know, and then that's what makes good products, right? That's right. Love it. That is Love true. It. And besides, he's a, he's still on his honeymoon in his I mind. Know, I know. So it's like, he's not <laughs> here really. Uh, I've, I've not really s- stopped yet, really, from just traveling around. and. and I just you know. saw the wedding pictures for the first time on Facebook. Oh, so fun. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. Very well, nice. I, you know, it, Facebook is so weird. I, like, they change it all the time. So, I, you know, I went to change my status or whatever, and then all the, fa- all the photos popped up. I was like, where did all these come from? But I guess it takes it from... Takes the photos from all over. I don't know how it all works. Well, you. I mean, the other thing there. too is, what's that? You guys popped in there, <laughs> and then we, and then all these photos popped up. I was like, yeah, but yeah, it okay. really so, happened. You have evidence. That's really right. I, I I didn't believe it actually until I saw the photos. <laughs> <laughs> it was all just hearsay before that. Oh, Meredith has actually been on the show, so she's. A I real know, person. but you're you're. Yeah, gonna, she's a real person, lovely. <laughs> you are going to have to though. You're going to have to send me a really good picture, uh, so that I can post it on the dr- dressage radio show page. So okay. every yes. so our listeners can have proof. Well, okay. <laughs> well, at last, what was it? Two days ago, we did this whole thing where we went to see the photographer. You know, I mean, we, we had a photographer oh, yeah. at the wedding, as you do, and then we went through. What was it six hundred photos or something? Really? And she's Just like, "Oh, me. these are these Just are." She's yourself. like, "These are." I narrowed it down to the best ones, and we spent two and they're hours. They're four hundred. Yeah, <laughs> great. Just yeah, two two hours going through six hundred photos Ugh. to get it down to. Our favorite 150 or whatever. I mean, <laughs> at the, the end, you were just ends. like, I don't it, care. Yeah, it's just... still wedding all the time. <laughs> they all look great. All the photos look great. Yeah. So I will find one of them. Find the one, yeah. Thousands. Find one photo. Send me one. The <laughs> one I actually saw that Reese posted, you were all pretty drunk by that point. I didn't want to post <laughs> that time. one. So yeah. uh, there, right. is some, there is some scandalous video around, you know, floating around somewhere. I think yeah. we're all doing a bit of karaoke by the end of the night. So it's I pretty fun. I haven't fun. seen that yet. I haven't seen no. this thing. <laughs> because I was smart it's not been to released to the public. Yeah. I was smart enough to put my phone away at this point. That was when it needed to go away. But on another note, Glenn, yes. how was your Thanksgiving? It was terrific. We had a we took the week off here in Florida and uh, had recorded shows all week, so that was nice. Mm-hmm. It was nice to actually get a break. And we're still eighty five degrees, and you're expecting an ice storm. So um, yeah, and God knows how cold it is for Philip. I I can't <laughs> yeah. even imagine. It's not that cold, actually. <laughs> oh, it was, will be. Uh, what was it, forty or forty-five degrees, something like that? Wow. Right, so. Well, everybody. You're the, the one getting the cold. Yeah, uh, we're fine. We're, we're you're fine. getting the cold, and uh, you know, it was <laughs> sixty. It was literally sixty-seven degrees yesterday. It was amazing. Everybody went on hacks. We all played outside. Oh. 
And I mean, December, 61 degrees, it was great. And everybody got fast. We played outside. Nobody really worked very hard yesterday. I thought they all needed a timeout and just playing outside. And then uh, it rained all day today. Uh, thankfully, I rode a few horses before I went to convention. And then um, it was cold and it is cold tonight. So I hope everyone is safe. No ice. Let's pray for no ice. And, and we're hoping we're going to actually stay a little too cold for ice. But we'll hopefully, hopefully. So we'll see. All right. Well, let's uh, talk. Today, we're on the show, we do have our gift guide. All three of us have picked out products that would be good for gifts for dressage people. And then uh, we also have a trainer tip coming up a little bit later on. Who's coming on with us, Philip? It's uh, a friend of recent I, mine and uh, Emily Craig. She's, uh, I think she's in the Pittsburgh area, uh, a trainer. So uh, she's going to come up with a trainer tip for us today, and uh, it should be fun. And we did get some uh, t or questions in, trainer questions from some listeners. We haven't forgotten you. I know that you responded to a couple of them trying to get more information. So we'll have those in the weeks to come as well. Keep your questions coming in. Well, let's take a break first for, uh, for a commercial from EasySignsOnline.com. And then we'll come back and hear a little bit about convention. Find out what's happening over there in Lexington. <laughs> With Christmas season fast approaching, it's time to start planning a custom gift that will last for many years to come. Visit our friends at ezsignsonline.com and browse their unique website for their many custom sign options and styles. With affordable prices for customized signs starting at $39.95, your holiday gift giving just got easier. Their step-by-step -step online sign ordering process allows you to choose only the sign options you want and see all the pricing up front. From horse farm entrance signs, vinyl banners, magnetic vehicle signs to stall nameplates, and much, much more for every horse owner. They ship to every state in the U.S., so take advantage of an additional 10% off coupon to all Horse Radio Network listeners. Simply mention HRN13 when ordering. That's HRN13. A $75 order minimum for discount. Cannot be combined with other discounts or coupons. Free shipping also applies to most sign orders, so see the website for details. Place your order early to allow plenty of time for Christmas delivery. Check out the website today at ezsignsonline.com. That's ezsignsonline.com or call them at 1-800-640-8180. That's 1-800-640-8180. So, guys, I had a great day convention. Um, it is here in Lexington, so I, it is great. We, I really decided uh, it's not very often that your national convention is 20 minutes from your farm. So we got up quite early this morning and rode uh, a couple groups of horses, and then we headed downtown. And um, it's really a cool year, um, and, and sometimes it's nice just to stop take a break and, and just sit and listen and, and learn some, some new things. So, um, the, some of the things that we did today, um, the lectures were great. I'm, I'm really enjoyed them. And, and, you know, being here in Lexington, it's, it's a very heavily veterinarian focused at this convention because we have such wonderful vets. So we actually listened, um, to, from Dr. Victoria Maxwell, degenerative joint disease in the performance horse. That was the first lecture, um, that I went to. And, um, I just jotted down some notes. Some some of them, um, you know, I'll just condense. But some of the risk factors for degenerative joint disease are trauma, your horse's conformation, fatigue, training, and that is uh, time and actually repetition, uh, the age of your horse, the shoeing of your horse, and just how progressed the disease is. Um, OCDs and that type of thing. So those are some uh, risk factors for degenerative joint diseases. Um, there are ways that we can help treat them. And she did go kind of heavily into the science-based um, part of it. Uh, one of the suggestions that she said for using drugs, the drugs that we should use and make sure that they are FDA approved. I thought that was interesting that there are a lot of drugs out there, um, but only a couple of them are FDA approved. So I liked that that kind of tip was use the ones that actually are, are meant to treat the problems that you have. Um, 
I think so, I've seen her before. She's pretty good. Does she have glasses? She is. Yes, she does. Yeah, and yeah, she's yeah. great. I really, I, she actually works for Adequan, and Adequan is the presenting sponsor of the convention. But she was very, very clear, brought it to a level that we could all understand. You know, why do you treat them with X types of drugs, not just Adequan? Are there other drugs that you use to treat and why you treat them? Um, so that one was a really, that was very, very helpful. Um, you know, and, in some of the therapies that she said were correct diagnosis, make sure that you're using, um, the correct therapy for the problem that you're having, um, control your inflammation and, um, just make sure that you can help kind of, one of the things she really stressed was repetitive motion. So a lot of lunging or a lot of, or fatigue, uh, working your horse too hard. Those are some things that can really, um, affect degenerative joint disease. So that was her talk kind of on, on the high level, which was great. And then after that, I went, let me get my notes here. After that, um, there was an equine re- rehabilitation and prevention care by the lady who owns Kesmark here in Lexington. And she went a little bit through what Kesmark does. It's a rehabilitation center and they can aqua tread the horses. They put them in the pool. Um, they hand walk a lot of, lot of specific things just to get the horses back to a level that they can go back to their regular training. Um, so again, that's something kind of you may potentially unique to our area of the country that we can send horses there, uh, which was great. And then I moved on to, um, a breeding, an embryo transfer, um, of the sport horse by, um, Dr. Christina Liu. And she's from Haggard Davis and McGee, one of our big clinics here. And it was very interesting. I've had some experience with embryo transfer. Denali, actually, who, you know, everybody knows I talk about a lot, my my love, um, he was an embryo transfer. And so I knew a lot about the process. And I'm I'm very glad I did that process, but I also learned a lot about the process and have very specific feelings uh, because it is very expensive. Um and what I know now is <laughs> save your money. For a year and buy a four-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You can save that whole teething thing. You, you don't go. have to deal with it, teething. It then. Yeah. That's the easy way. It is, it, is, it is a very complicated process. And again, I, I am glad that um, I, I love my Denali very much and, and I wouldn't change it for the world. And, you know, I can, I can say literally I saw him at seven days of uh, – I mean, he was an embryo when I saw him. They they transferred them at seven days. Um, I saw him get his first bath. And, you know, there's a lot of cool things about that um, that I can say that I did that and, and that he's my own horse out of my own mare. And so there's lots to say. But uh, so there was an interesting talk for me. And I come from a little different perspective after doing it. Um, but I'm glad I, I went to that talk. And, and it's she's got lots of information. And, um, you know, like I said, I, I have been successful and I have been unsuccessful. I actually lost two embryos. Um, and they had been transferred. They were grade one embryos. They went to the the recipient mares and they were fine at 45 days. And then we lost two horses, <laughs> lost two embryos uh, between 45 and 60 days. And there was really no explanation. There was no reason for it. So, so I have heartbreak with embryo transfer too. So if anybody has any questions, I'm happy to answer it. Very expensive. <laughs> So then um, after that lecture, which was very informative, I moved to the instructor certification um, committee, which is just presenting what was going on um, in the instructor certification program. And there's always time during convention that the committees are open, that anybody can go and and answer and and or ask questions. Um, So definitely recommend it for everyone. I I haven't been to convention in a long time. So I was really happy to go to this uh, meeting. And um, it was just to prove today that the FEI certification has gone through. So you keep an eye out for that, that um, actually anybody can test for the FEI certification. You don't have to be certified through fourth level. You can, if you meet the requirements, you have to send in an application. So more of that will, will be coming out and maybe we can have somebody on to kind of explain that, that program, um, it's an expensive program, but it, it is um, it is a, a good one. And then to finally end the day, and actually the guys can tell you I was a little late for recording because this was such a good lecture. And and I am going to uh, call both Christy and Bill, um, Christy Wysocki and Bill Salinches. Um, we're doing a talk on sport horse confirmation. 
And it's called the dressage sport horse, the good, the bad, the ugly. And I mean, I have pages of notes, so I don't think I can go through them, but it was truly a wonderful lecture. Like I was shocked. I was a little bit like, well, you know, I got to leave early. Um, and I could barely leave. I could barely get myself out of the chair. Um, so they talked about different body types, confirmation, movement, what are the different jobs the horses want to do, um, talking about gates. We've talked about this a lot on the show, but you know, if you're picking out a horse, no matter what breed it is, and they, and they really were talking about any type of horse. This is not just, you know, they, they showed, um, they showed totalist, you know, yes, everybody wants that for $20,000, but we all know we're not going to get that. So what are some things that, what are severe faults? What are minor faults? What are faults you could live with? Um, talking about the gates, the correctness of the horse, um, and it was great. And they had a system to evaluate, which I thought I've never seen that before. And they used plumb lines on the horses and where they placed their plumb lines had to do with the type of horse that you, um, found. So it was extremely interested and I will, um, it was so good. I'm going to, um, talk to them and see if I can have them on. Um, and they were wonderful together. So, um, I we will, have, we had Christy on not too long ago, didn't we? If I remember right. Uh, I don't think Christy's been on our show before. She not, is wonderful. Yeah, not our show. Yeah. yeah, not our show. Maybe she was on another another show on the Horse Radio Network. We have awesome other shows other than ours. Um, so we will <laughs> we will work awesome. on it. Not, not as, as awesome. awesome. <laughs> we are the awesomest. That's a that's a word. Awesomest. So um so it was truly good. And then I will also find out they're gonna do one of these in um and I haven't even told Philip this is something I'm gonna put on my calendar. They're doing a seminar on sport horses in July. And uh, I literally I was so impressed with the talk that I am gonna put it on my calendar and, and hopefully Philip, you can you and Meredith can join me. Um it was great. So All right, I, I wasn't wrong. Christy Waisaki was yep. on the Dressage Show recently, but it was uh, one of the para episodes. Uh, there you go. <laughs> well, there she was on our awesome show. <laughs> she's a neat lady. Neat. She's a great judge. And but this was really a great talk to to talk about it. So um, I know my segment is running over, but some of the great things that are happening tomorrow. Um, there's an instructor certification workshop for certified instructors that I'm heading to. But in the morning. Um, let's see what's going on. There's some round table discussions, some importance of, um, gastric health, uh, colic and equine me- and emergency medicine. There is a rider fitness every morning uh, from six 30 to seven 30. That's the one I should go to. Um, doing some and, yoga, some, yeah, uh, I don't Pilates know what they're doing. The- yeah. I'll have to find somebody who's actually, who's going. Um, and then, uh, Duncan Peters is talking about myth busters of equine sport. Um, and then on Saturday, uh, Dr. Newton, who we've had on the show before, he is giving a lecture. Um, everything you need to know about insurance, but are we're afraid to ask. That's going on. Um, I am actually talking to the youth. Um, I'm on a panel um, after high school, college, or GoPro. So um, I think I'm the only professional rider, and there, there are other um, ladies that are on that panel that are uh, other careers in horses. So that should be fun. We're looking forward to that very much. And um, Wait a minute. Let, this- let's stop right there. Philip oh, and I oh. are still <laughs> stuck on you influencing the youth and how they're encouraging that. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I was trying to encouraging get Reese. That. Yes. Encourage yeah. the youth. Yes, I was I know. trying to pass that, ladies and gentlemen, past the, so they could make that comment. But yes, I'm going to encourage yeah. the youth. And, um, <laughs> and uh, no, it'll be great. Fun. We love and you, Reese. I know you had to. We tease know me. that nobody else was available, but we still love you. Nobody <laughs> else was. Av- I was cheap. <laughs> it's okay. I was cheap. They didn't have to. They just had to give me. Uh, you know. Convention. She lives near there. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah. I, was the only, I was the closest and one that they knew that would say yes. So. <laughs> <laughs> so that'll be really fun. So it should be a really fun weekend and um, lots of great information. I, I honestly forgot um, how many great talks are at convention and, and you get to see so many people and it's a relaxed environment and it's nice sometimes to sit down and have a coffee with a friend that, you know, at horse shows, we always say, well, we'll get together and we never do. So, so it's nice to actually have a chance to do that. So Very awesome. Yeah. Sounds like fun. Yeah, that's my, that's my report. All right. I'll well, give more next week. Thank you, Reese. Well, let's <laughs> just you, take Reese. a quick break for EquiSketch and then come back and talk about gift buying and, and the products we've come up with.
Glenn the Geek here. The life of horse person is hard enough, and we all hate doing the required paperwork, and unfortunately many of us never get around to it, and it just piles up on our desk. That is about to change thanks to the Equisketch Records app for your iPhone or iPad. My wife and I use it to track our horses, and we absolutely love this thing. Equisketch Records is the most thorough and complete equestrian records app on the market today. We love this app because you can track your farrier work, your dental, your Coggins, medicines, worming, and so much more. And you can get reminders on your device when all of these things are due. You'll never forget a worming or shots or farrier visit again. But it not only tracks your horse, you can also manage your horse shows, including individual events. You can manage riders, including lessons and memberships and so much more. And you can sync it between your iPhone and your iPad, and all of this for the price of a couple of cups of coffee from Starbucks. Search for Equisketch Records in the iOS App Store or go to Equisketch.com. That's E-Q-U-I-S-K-E-T-C-H.com. Equisketch.com. Back here in the Dressage Radio Show, and we're getting into one of the things I love to talk about a lot, and that's products. Do you want to just go around the table here? Do you want to start, Reese, with with your book, sure. seeing you're the only one that did market research? I did market <laughs> research today. And and actually, I have to be honest, I looked at Glenn's list, and a couple of products on Glenn's were on our market research. So I will, I will share that when we get by. But the first one that I found on convention today... I have no idea. I literally just picked up the flyer and said, this is a great idea. And it is stablemattress.com. And it is literally a mattress. We all know the um, saddle racks that you put um, that are plastic and they have a rim around them. You know what I'm talking about? Does that make yeah. sense? Yep, yep, those, yeah. Yeah. Those, I mean the standard saddle rack. The standard saddle rack. Right. Well, if you put your saddle on that all the time, your saddle, I guarantee your saddle fitter will tell you your saddle has ridges in it from where it sits on that saddle rack for yep. 24, 23 hours a day. Um, and this rack fits on top of that, which I thought was so cool. So saddle – Saddlemattress.com. There not you go. Not for people. Not for nice people. Not for, for saddles. Not for, yeah, not for anybody else, but for saddles. So, <laughs> so your saddlemattress.com. Saddle well. Yep. I thought that was really cool. So that was my first product. And uh, do you did you say how much they cost? Do you know? You know, I, the flyer doesn't say. Well, <laughs> no. I'm on their website. Oh, okay. They're $99. $99, uh, including personalization. Now I should read the flyer. Yeah. yeah actually, it's that you can put your monogram on the back mm-hmm. or a logo, it looks like. Yeah. Oh, nice. Very cool. So there you go. Saddle so it's mattress. just like a mattress for your saddle. Yeah, you just yeah. slide it on the rack, and then you don't have those ridges in your saddle. Well, you, you know that what? You spend a fortune on. Yeah, exactly. You're going to spend seven thousand dollars <laughs> on a saddle. You might as well put it on a mattress for ninety nine bucks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's a good idea. I never yeah. heard of it. This is a uh, new one, Reese. Good job. Yes, thank you, convention <laughs> and market research. <laughs> Philip, so I- what go about Can- are Canadians? Uh, do we do oh. we have different products from Canada? Are you going to? Well, I, I just came up with a list of, like I said, the things that I, you know, I kind of am using every day. And uh, one of the things I got last year for Christmas, in fact, I mean, th- I think most of my things are kind of cold weather. Um, <laughs> Wonder why? Helpers, I that, right? that's, for our, that's for us Canadians, you know, think how to deal with the with the winter cold. And uh, one of the things I got last year, is, it was one of my favorite gifts ever, was um, my heated jacket because, well, for what? trainers and yeah. And uh, horse people, we spend a lot of time outdoors, and uh, and so I got this. This it's something I would have never really thought to buy for myself. Who was it from? Um, Do you know? Who, Great who, idea. Yeah, made mine is made by uh, Columbia. Oh, it is. But okay. I've seen um, a number of new ones come out this year, and they have a small um, lithri- lithium battery pack in. You know, it's rechargeable. You recharge it at night. And then, you know, there's a button on the jacket, and I just turn it on, and like for six or eight hours... It, it's, yeah, through a small wire that goes all the way through the jacket, right? And like, it really right does work. It works. And it works, and it's awesome. <gasps> yeah, Flip, you know really what I want? I stand Christmas. there and teach, and I get toasty. I stay really warm. Um, so again, that's that's an awesome 
awesome product. Um, you know, if you want to get your coach something or, or you Does know, it get somebody too that's just, your friend Reese, Philip, or your friend Reese, oh, Reese, if it was colder down there, I would, but you know, <laughs> does it get too hot? Um, they turn off. Like if it gets like, if, I think if it feels itself get, you know, like overheated that it's just got an automatic shut off. Um, oh this. But this one, I mean, there's all different ones, but this one, there's three levels of heat. So if you put it on the lowest level, when it's just a little bit cold, that it will it will last for like 12 hours or something. But if you crank it right up on the hottest, it only lasts for six. So a- um, yeah, you can turn it down. To, I mean, you can turn it off if you wanted to ride in the jacket. And then, uh, you know, after you're done riding, you can turn it back on. I mean, it's awesome. So that's uh, one of my favorite Gifts, Ooh, one of my let things. me uh, let me just uh, say that the uh, Columbia heated jackets made in a, a small number of them made in 2012 had a recall. <laughs> yeah, um, be, be, <laughs> so because <laughs> because a manufacturer flaw that may cause an electrical short to occur, giving rise oh. to to the jacket <laughs> catching on fire. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Philip, you should check your jacket. <laughs> I did, I did. I heard about the recall. They solved that problem. Okay, all right, good. So it's, it's a certain <laughs> model or something like that. That yeah, those. I mean, you know, there's bumps when you're making yeah. new products. There's bumps yeah. along the road. <laughs> you know what? I think there are days where I'd be okay if my jacket kind of got get, caught a little fire. Caught a fire yeah. a little bit. <laughs> Gave me a little extra buzz there, a little heat. There. I just picture that scene in the Hunger Games where they catch, yeah. where they're on the chariot oh, and yeah. they catch on fire. Catch yeah, fire. you, yeah. yeah. That's Philip has his own version of that while riding. <laughs> while riding the horses, he's doing his two time changes and fires. <laughs> Well, oh, that's a good one. That hey, uh, good one. I really like it anyway. We will, um, we will definitely, I want to tell everybody, you don't have to remember all of this in our show notes on Dressage Radio Show for today's episode, episode Philip number 100, or 236. 236. We will put links to all of these products that we're talking about, so you don't have to re- try and remember them all. Well, while we're on winter, I, I don't need these anymore, but I loved them when we <laughs> lived up north in Massachusetts, uh, is the, I'll, I'll throw one out here for you guys, is the Heritage Adult Extreme Winter glove i absolutely love these things and i'll tell you why is i always had trouble finding a glove that was made for riders that was big enough for my hand and especially the winter gloves because basically all some of the other glove companies do is they take the summer glove and they stuff it full of stuff and then it becomes even smaller um so they don't adjust the size but these fit really well they go up to size like 12 so the, i i could find them that fit my hand they have the th- they have the thinsulate insulation they're rain cut so uh so your rains they have they're waterproof they have the the cuff over the the wrists they're really good for drivers too wow. so so i really like these they're like four, i'm thinking in the 49 dollar range Wow. Um, so the or thirty. Let me check. Um, Those look awesome. Thirty six dollars. Thirty six dollars. Yeah, really yeah. reasonable. That's it really is. Reasonable. Yeah. I like Heritage tends to make uh, gloves for men too. So you know, mm-hmm. if you're a guy out there that has this problem where you can't get riding gloves to fit because they make them all for tiny women. Um, you know, and then the winter ones, as I said, what they do is they just stuff them, usually take the summer gloves, stuff them. And then, you know, all of a sudden it doesn't fit anybody, uh, heritage, extreme winter gloves, any retailer has them. So just take a look for them and shop for price. Love it. That's one for, for you people that actually live in the cold. Yeah, yeah and it has cell phone them, fingers. I don't need yeah, them. Yeah, you don't need them. Thank you, Glenn. Rub some salt in that wound, man. Rub yeah, they have cell phone there. fingers, too. Yes, yeah, I forgot about so that. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can use your cell phone with them. Yep. Love yeah, it. you need the cell phone fingers. Yeah. Yep. Love it. All right, Reese. Cool. All right, so my next is a category. So, and I'm sorry about the category, but of course, I was sitting with a bunch of ladies, and we all felt like the bedazzled anything bedazzled is in right now. So, <laughs> so you can imagine no everyone's way. like, I have, I have a fleck whip that's bedazzled handle, which I actually also have a bedazzled handle on one of my whips and I love it. And nobody, everyone knows not to touch my princess stick because they Do you it. own a bedazzler, Reese? I do not own a bedazzler. Okay. Okay. <laughs> no, I do not want one for, want one for Christmas, Glenn. Thank Are you, you watching much. QVC now, Reese? No, I know. Yeah, in my <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, I'm not. But, um, you know, that's there's what I'm going to get, Reese. Fun. I'm going to get her a bedazzler. A bedazzler. That's a great <laughs> idea. <laughs> she could do the blankets. She could everything. do her clothes. Her, her, uh, her, her coat, her show so coat. She'll have it all bedazzled on yeah. the back. Come on, ladies. I know the ladies want bedazzled, <laughs> but there are great bedazzled coats. And there are. I think that's um, a good guide for like what to get women. I think it's so easy to yeah. shop for women. That's the thing because yeah. you just get 
So either yeah. sparkly or shiny, and they're happy. And I, got, <laughs> That's right. I forget. It's very where, simple. Yeah, it's sparkly or shiny. I got my assistant some bling spurs, and they're very, they're very nice. They're not crazy because I'm actually not a really blingy type person, but I think it's fun and I think it's cool. And they're helmets and jackets and spurs, not like Western spurs. That's not what I'm saying. Just a little, you know. Little little bling there. So so that was my next category. Was I'm not quite sure what the link to there. So I think I'm going to find the QVC bedazzler and I'm going to link to that. <laughs> Thank you, Glenn. Yeah. You're welcome. It. Yeah, I really appreciate that. <laughs> All right, Philip, you're next. <laughs> well, I'm going to bring it back to uh, you know another practical gift and uh, one of our sponsors for this year, the Shaken Fork. I oh, just got to yeah. bring it back to that because our Shaken Fork. Uh, when did we get that thing in in the spring? Anyways, it's still going. Same Mine fork. Too. Awesome. Still going. We, we've actually <laughs> worn the, the paint off the handle a little bit, but yeah. I don't care. It is still going. That was on my list, too. You stole it, Philip, and I Glenn's know, I know, list. And I know it was on Glenn's list as well. Yeah. Well, I can't live but without I my shake and fork. Oh, my God. Products. They're so good. They're, they're awesome. Yeah. Yeah, no, they're they're I that was. They on have my list two too. different kinds. They have the flex and fork, and then the shake and fork. And the flex and fork runs about seventy bucks, which is uh, which is the super duper sturdy fork. If you don't clean many stalls, or you clean a lot of outside paddocks, that's what we have. That's what yeah, I have. That's right. That's and and great. then the shake and fork is actually the motorized one, and uh-huh. I highly recommend that to anybody who cleans over three stalls a day. Get the shake and fork. You'll clean them in half the time, with half the effort, and use half the bedding. Literally. I need My landlord that. just brought his horses, and he doesn't do that very often. They they live on the other side of the farm, and he's a retired two star general. And uh, he, um, he, I, he he was pining after my forks because I have one of each. And I said, "Try the shaking fork next time you clean the stalls." Well, he, yesterday he came to me and he said, "That is the coolest thing ever." <laughs> he was so you know because what guy doesn't want a gadget? And then to clean yeah. stalls yeah, with mean, a gadget. I I mean, mean, maybe yes, I can exactly. get Travis. I have to get a shaking fork. Maybe T will help me with stalls. What? I'll tell you what, guys will help us. I, I, <laughs> I volunteer to clean the stalls now because it's so much fun to use the shaking fork. Really? So much fun. Oh, it my is. Gosh. It is. I mean, we, we <laughs> got to get a shaking fork. But they are great. Cool. I, the yep. Flexi Fork is, I mean, we do a lot of stalls around here, and it is great. And with a lot of different operators, and, and we break forks. We were breaking those things left and right. Like, oh, my God, I was buying two a month. So, uh, you know, we haven't bought any. It's great. Love it. I talked to Joseph yesterday, who runs the company and invented these forks. And, uh, you know, we always say these things are indestructible. And he hates that because he said they can break. And I said, we have done, we've run the gator over this thing. I've <laughs> stepped on it. The horses have stepped on yeah. it. We have tried to break it, Joseph. Yeah. And he said, well, you can't guarantee it's not going to break because eventually they're going to break. break. Everything yeah. breaks eventually. I said, well, we've sure tried to break the damn thing. Yeah. So. <laughs> no, I'm with you. It's, it's, it is a great, it by far is, it is gold star. Like I was a little and skeptical. And you know what? The, what makes these a great gift, and I wanted to say this, is it's a gift that truly will keep on giving all yes, year. All year. All year. Because they're going to so thank you every you time use every they day. use it. Every day. Yep. Yep. Twice, three times a day. Exactly. Here. Equitymfg.com is where love you it. go for that. Love it. Good love one. It. Good one. Good one. Good one. Yes. So what do you got up. next, Glenn? Uh, no, I'm going to go with some the stocking stuffer, something simple and cheap. And this comes from my my rescue pony. This is his favorite thing. Uh, and he wanted me to include it in the show tonight. We had a discussion <laughs> about it today. Um, it is the it is a put out by Epona. Epona makes a line of grooming products, and that's E P O N A. They make a terrific line of grooming grooming products, but they make something called the grooming mitt. When I got my pony, he was skin and bones about ready to die. And his skin was so sensitive, I couldn't curry him at all. I, I barely could brush him. And he was a mess. But when, she, when we went, I saw this product at the Epona booth. She said, take this, buy this, take it home. Your rescue pony will love this thing because it won't hurt him like the curry combs. It's a glove you put on. It's a grooming mitt you put on. But it's made of something that's a little bit different. It's a plasticky, but it's different. And he loved the thing from day one. Absolutely loves it. You can get all the nooks and crannies because it wraps around your hand. So you're just basically giving him a massage and a curry at the same time. These grooming mitts, and I've used it now for half a year, and it's held, held up. I don't have any problems. It's not falling apart at all. And I use it on him every day. And he loves the grooming mitt. Uh, so I highly recommend this. It's only about, I think it's about 
10 bucks. Yeah. So I use one too, Glenn. I love it. I saw it on your list too. Your list is great. Um, yeah, I, I use it. I bathe everybody in it and I love it. Well, you you know, what's so nice about it too, Reese, for those that aren't using the the mitts yet is you can feel their body. So not only are you grooming them, like Mm -hmm. with the rubber, you can't feel bumps and stuff. And this, you feel every nook and cranny and every bump that's on their body. I found ticks that way. Um, you know, it really is much better solution than those those cheapy rubber things. Yeah, and I haven't necess- I haven't actually used it dry. I, I only use it to bathe. Oh no, and- use it for oh, use it as a curry comb. Great, yeah, yeah love it. Love no, use it. it as a curry comb, and then to clean it off, you just beat it on the wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're really easy to work with. Oh, love it. Yeah, Epona. Very cool. Epona, that's a cool mitt. I I I I like your list, Glenn. You're on it. All right, Philip, what do you what do you got? Uh, well, the I think this is this is the last thing on my list. I'm sorry I didn't come up with a big list, but um, and again another stuffing, uh, stock, stocking stuffer idea. Um, but almost every day I use. I mean, especially when it gets really cold, I use um, the heater packs in my boots every day yes. because those are just. It's just. I mean, you can buy. There's different um, brands, but they're cheap and I think there's a they're about a dollar for two of them right and you just you know open them up stuff them in your boots and you're good I think they go five to eight hours a day and they keep your feet warm without especially if you're in riding boots um you know like I don't like to ride in the like the winter riding boots where you you know you can't feel the horse so I just like to get them you know get the heat down on the toes and uh keeps me going all day so I you know I love yeah. that those products I mean there's ones that you know you put in your gloves for your hands Obviously, you can't ride with a you know with an extra thing in there. But if you're standing around or you're teaching, you know um, these heater packs. I mean, you shake them up and you just stick them down there, and then yeah. so do uh, you forget um, that it's even cold. Like, do I you got not this. use winter boots at all? You use no. Your, no. I don't either. Mm-mm. I also use no. the heater, the the feet. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're thin enough so to kind of get in there without yep. having you know like I use a kind of a thicker sock in the winter, obviously, but just to have those in there. I mean. Yeah. You know, they're disposable they're awesome. and they're, they're quick and they're easy and they're awesome. So, Have you guys uh, ever yeah. tried the heated socks with the little battery pack? What? Why did yeah, I not know there them. were this line I've of heated products? Them. Yes, they have <laughs> How do I not uh, heated know this? socks. With, and my what? wife used to have them when we lived in Massachusetts. They have a little battery pack that hooks to the outside of the boot. Yep. And then uh, no you, your socks are heated. Yep. <laughs> I had no idea cool there was thing. such a line of heated products. <laughs> well, they're coming out with more and more every day, I right? Love so that it. we don't have to go down to Florida. I know, right? Right, exactly. I love it. What it's probably great... cheaper to buy all this crap than yeah, come to Florida. So. Yeah, exactly, yeah. in the long run, maybe. Touche. Uh, absolutely. I love it. Good idea. Reese? All right, but my final one, um, and again, this came from um, being down at convention, and I'm going up the I'm going up the escalator, and boom, I see dressage clinics online. Um, there's uh, dressage clinics online is one. Dressage meeting online is another. There are a lot of these sites that are training sites, and um, I don't know about everybody, but since I'm not going to Florida, just cry with the horses. Uh, we'll come down and visit Glenn. Thank um, you. You're welcome. But um, so what is cool about these sites is it really helps kind of stimulate. That's one of the things I love about going to Florida is there's always something going on. And I think when you stay uh, where it's cold and you get in the house and you're just not inspired, a membership to one of these online sites, um, I would love it. I think it would be great. And it would make you sit down and, and, and get inspired by watching some really cool horses in the sun. And um, But I think it's a really good way to um, – they're not super expensive, but for a month or two, to, just to kind of work on your own skills, I think is a great idea, and I think it would be a really fun thing to have. So, that was one. That was my last one. And what were a couple of them again? Dressage uh, clinics online. Dressage or? clinics online. Dressage meeting online. Um, those were some. And actually, USDF has one. And I, I think if you're a member to the organization, it's free. It's called eTrack. Um, it's free. You could go on if you're a member, um, and it's a great site. Um, so that is if you want to just give somebody a gift card and just remind them that that, that exists. So, yeah, those are cool. those were mine. Yeah, yeah, those were mine. Very good. Very <laughs> good. Two quick ones here that I want to close out with. Um, one is if you're looking for to go completely different, if you're looking for housewares, there is a line of sculptures by Beverly Zimmer. 
Z-I-M-M-E-R. If you just look up Beverly Zimmer Sculpture, she does all kinds of horse sculptures, some really cute stuff for the house. I know Equestrian Collections carries her whole line. So if you're looking for something that's a little bit different, and they're affordable, you know, for sculptures. They're affordable. Mm -hmm. They're beautiful. Um, And then the other thing, too, is, uh, and everybody will recognize this name, Shannon Peters. We had her on the Stable Scoop radio show recently, highlighting her new show ring shine kit. Uh, that is a uh, a kit that she put together to uh, that has boot shine and all the different stuff that goes with it, the cloth and everything. And she put this kit together to really make a good shoe shine kit. Uh, and uh, I, I like it. I think the product's great. So I don't know if yeah. you've been hearing about it on in the dressage world, or but it's a that would be kind of a classy gift because it comes in a classy packaging, and you know, it'd be kind of uh, a neat gift to get a trainer, or wouldn't you think? Oh, yeah. Oh my God, yeah, I would absolutely. love that. That's, oh, that's really God. cool. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I've heard about this kit from from Shannon mm-hmm. Peters. This is it's fairly new, and I think yep. she's promoting it, and uh, it looks yep. awesome. So yeah, and, slide and it in your maybe trunk somewhere or... somehow I'll get one. Yeah, it's, that would be awesome. It's showringshine.net. Showringshine.net is the website for that. And we'll put links to it again on all, in, in our show notes. And then we have to mention, we're going to do our trainer tip. And, and uh, Jennifer put together a bumper for your trainer tip now with okay. a little music and everything. And we have a sponsor for it now, Fleece Works. So uh, let's hear that. Top dressage horses are like athletes. There's a whole team of people involved in their training. From it's time for the Dressage Radio Show Weekly Training Tip, brought to you by Fleeceworks. Designers and manufacturers of top quality, pure Australian merino wool saddle pads and accessories for your equine teammate. Well, Fleeceworks is the sponsor. Talk about a terrific holiday gift. Uh, and they're sponsoring now the trainer tip every week. You know what? Fleeceworks is a product that if you want to get something for the dressage person in your life, get them a fleece pad from Fleeceworks. And then you're going to be talking quality gift here. Um, this is something that you're definitely, when they get it, you're, they're going to know it's quality. Because you touch one of their pads and you know that you're getting something that's, uh, that's really special. So we want you to head on over to uh, fleeceworks.com and take a look at all the different dressage pads that they have and all the different price ranges. They would make an excellent holiday gift for the dressage person in your life at fleeceworks.com. Who we got today? Oh, we are so excited to have our friend Emily Craig on the show tonight. Emily, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. You are a wonderful um, FEI trainer from Pittsburgh, and you have a great trainer tip for us um, on how to use some trot poles. Yes. Uh, this is an exercise that uh, the first time I was exposed to this exercise was in a clinic with Conrad Schumacher when, as part of the USDS series that he conducted, and um, and it's something that stuck with me. Uh, so <clears throat> typically, I'll be teaching a lesson, and uh, it could be an amateur or a professional, and probably the ride just is lacking direction. The connection is unsteady, and uh, whether typically it's probably the trot work or canter work that's just not quite together. And one exercise that I like to incorporate into the session would be the use of a 20 meter circle with uh, trot poles, uh, three of them typically, um, which would be on the open side of the circle. Um, so somewhere, depending on the size of your ring, but somewhere away from A and C uh, towards X. And I would place three rails on the ground. Um, and if the horse hasn't been over poles, I would let them do a single pole and then add two, two additional poles. Um, but just to make sure that they've, you know, the goal is that they've been over these. So it's not a, a surprise. Hopefully there shouldn't be a surprise with incorporating a pole. Um, and, and so he would place those. I wear a size eight <laughs> blundstone. So <laughs> I kind of eyeball it, but I walk off typically for a horse five, five of my feet. Um, and I walk heel to toe, heel to toe, uh, with a pony, I would probably do four and you can always, I feel like you can, it's hard if you're riding on your own and you don't have a ground person. So, um, I usually use that system when I'm riding on my own, so I don't, I don't have to get on and off and readjust. Um, but sometimes you do have to. If, if it's a, a bigger horse, you have to adjust and make them a little wider. Um, 
And so I would start by just having the horse and rider go over the poles and trot um, a few times, both directions, just to make sure that they're comfortable with that and that the lift is accurate. And then you uh, go ahead and you pick up canner. So if you're tracking left, you pick up left lead canner and you canner the closed side of the circle. Um, and then a trot transition after you're leaving the rail and you trot over the poles. And it's vital that you don't make the mistake that I did when I first wrote this exercise with Mr. Schumacher. Uh, and do not canter over the poles um, because they're not I did that one too. That one too. <laughs> <laughs> Unless they're set for canter, that doesn't really work, guys. When I was a junior, right. I did that. And I don't think I've ever recovered some ear. I know. It was, it was traumatic. And so I remember... <laughs> I agree. The Young Horse Symposium, and and we were they were actually having horses canter. I think Aaron Crawford was having them canter over the poles, and I thought, no, 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 you can't do that. Nervous. You're not allowed yeah, to do I that. that yeah, I saw that too, <laughs> so, and got a little sweaty. <laughs> so you want to make sure that you're you're really breaking it down. The trot work happens over the poles. The canter work ha- happens over the closed side of the circle. Um, and and I find with students that sometimes the hard part is making it happen. Is is that, you know, that promptness, the accuracy of getting the depart in time to trot over the poles and or the, the transition downward in time to trot over the poles. And then you have to be quick enough to put your horse together and pick up Leslie Canner again. Um, and so I don't mind, like when I'm teaching it, I don't mind that maybe they end up having to just canter, uh, you know, go around the poles and they canter 20 meter circle. Um, or I don't mind that they just get three strides of canner is I want, I don't care that they make mistakes and, and that maybe things are kind of hectic at first and that to be expected because, um, you're, you're changing their ways and they're having to think faster and react and, and take risks. And, um, so typically I find that this is good with, with making students who want to be a little bit, um, take their time or maybe, I find it's interesting. Some people, it's normal. They get apprehensive about the Kennedy part. And so there's all this build up, build up, build up, and, and it doesn't happen <laughs> or it happens and it's a mess. Um, and that's okay. But, uh, so, so this exercise, I would ride to the left and to the right. Sometimes I see, you know, weaknesses one way is easier, one way is harder. Um, and that's totally normal. And the goal is that you start to feel a rhythm and, and that you can become, you know, you just keep repeating. And I think the repetition of the exercise is great. I've done it with young horses um, who just, I think they take comfort in that repetition and they start to become confident about what's coming up and, and they start to find a rhythm in the canter and the trot. And then the poles themselves help them develop more swing and, um, and so I've, I mean, I've found it to be really useful with young horses, uh, amateur riders, professional riders, and then even, you know, horses that you're working on more collected canter work and that you can play with even maybe a little bit of leg yielding in and out of the poles, or, um, you play with, you know, more collected canter on the spot and then maybe a little bit more lengthening canter. Um, so it seems to be. A, a pretty simple exercise and kind of the, the theory, you know, it's a pretty easy exercise to put together. Um, but I think it presents a lot of opportunities for adjustability and, and moving up the levels. So Emily, maybe you could tell us a few of the most common mistakes that you see in this exercise where somebody is going to give it a, somebody's going to go with this and give it a try. What, what would you say some of the pitfalls would be and, and how to correct that? I think some of the pitfalls would be a little bit with uh, getting comfortable with what width, you know, the poles have to be and figuring out what, how many feet you need between each pole for your horse. Um, So that might take some adjusting and uh, trial and error on the part of the rider if they're riding on their own uh, or even if their trainer's there Um, and gauging, you know, how many strides or how wide they need to be for the horse. Um, and I think also a little bit what I said earlier, I think I see a lot of pitfalls, which are to be expected would be, um, that the canter department just doesn't happen and, and you end up trotting <laughs> kind of rushing through the half circle and you don't get the canter depart, um, or, or you don't get the, the downward in time 
to trot over the poles. Um, and so that's where I think the, I think sometimes the rider has to be willing to adjust and, and maybe you, you take the horse away from the poles and you kind of regroup, compose yourself, get the canner. Um, so I, like, sometimes I want to see the rider push themselves and, and make it happen. And, but then if I see that, that they're starting to unravel and, um, and it's too much, then I like to take them away from the exercise, regroup, and then come back and see if they can start to put it together. Um, so I think, you know, kind of the expectation that it sounds easy to, you know, make it happen, but sometimes it's really hard to put those pieces together. Um, the downward, the deep part, the poles, you know, the canner. Um, so those would be the two things that I think are typical kind of, um, issues that you can run into when doing this exercise. Yeah. And I, I think that's, that's great to sort of break it down because there, that's, what's so good about this exercise and you can build it up slowly you know, you can start just by going over the poles with no transition and then and then change it that way. Um, and I loved how you said you need to be able to sort of think quickly and maybe adjust. So if you're kind of coming around in the circle and it's not going to work and you see that, it's good to be able to kind of quickly make that decision in circle or, or right. do a transition and, and or even a turn on the forehand. Sometimes I've seen that work really well in this exercise is just yeah, do a transition. Yeah. That's no, another, I was thinking of the turn on the forehand as a, that's another thing that I really, really like. And I've been using more of, I guess, somewhat recently. Um, but I think, yeah, when the horse, if the horse starts to take over is, is that you, you don't sort of get stuck in the exercise and forget why you're doing it. And, you know, that it's not, you're not doing it just for the sake of going through the motions of doing this exercise, but you want to have a good feeling in your hand and, um, the horse isn't just rushing around. Uh, so that's a good point about the turn on the forehand. Two, one. Well, Emily, we know that you have a very exciting move in your future. Can you tell us a little <laughs> about that? Yes. So, uh, I'm, uh, born and bred, I guess, bred and born or whatever <laughs> in Pittsburgh, <laughs> Pennsylvania. Um, so I've lived in Western PA my entire life and, um, uh, in 2009, I met a very nice gentleman from the eastern part of the state, and um, and long story short, we're now engaged uh, to be married uh, next year. And uh, Mark is um, in Chester County in Unionville, so uh, sometime probably in spring, um, I will be relocating to the Kennett Square Unionville area, and so uh, hoping that I can develop a, a business. So. Great. So, <laughs> well, and you also have a blog and tell us a little bit about your blog and also tell us how you started your blog. Cause you are our first uh, person that's using a blog for social media. And we think it's really interesting to hear your story. Our first, our first trainer. We talked our to trainer. some bloggers before. We love yeah, we talked to, I'm sorry. Come sorry. On. First trainer. Excuse me. Sorry. Sorry. First <laughs> trainer that is using <laughs> blogs. And I think it's really cool because uh, it's definitely a new way to do it. So tell us a little bit about your blog and how um, you got started. So the blog, um, the the address is uh, Emily Dutton. My middle name is D U T T O N. Um, Emily Dutton Craig. Blogspot. Com, and uh, I created the blog uh, as a result. I guess it was in 2012 when I attended the USDF Young Rider or Graduate Young Rider program, uh, which is a great great program that I've been to uh, part of twice, and. Um, Hillary Moore, who's with Dressage Today, spoke. She got up and spoke to the group, and um, she circulated. Everyone had a sheet of paper with their name on it, and some people had a ton of information about themselves, and some people had absolutely nothing, and uh, and other people had information that was totally false and didn't pertain to them. And so uh, Hillary's point was that she wanted us to know <clears throat> when you Google your name um, what you find about yourself, and so she went through and uh, searched for information about everyone in the, in the group and to see what she could come up with. And um, she emphasized just the, the importance of, of, you know, having some source of information about yourself online, some presence online that you control. And uh, whether it's a Facebook page, a website, a blog, just something so that if you're a trainer, you know, pretty much everyone in the room the assumption is that they're all trainers, so they're up and coming teachers. 
trying to make a living in the business and uh, and that they want to have something out there so that if someone wants to take a lesson with them or have them train their horse, they can find a way to contact them. Um, and so that hit home for me because I thought, well, I'm on Facebook, but that's private. And uh, and it made sense for me to create a blog because I wasn't really that skilled with creating a website. And um, the blog seemed like a pretty uh, easy to put together, easy to manage source, you know, online presence that I could could have. And um, so I've I tried it. My goal is that I keep it. I try to do an update once a month. Sometimes it's more. Um, and uh, and it's I think it's good. I I. I find that my farrier uh, pays attention to it and people, people find it and it's not something that I put out there. I don't really promote it. Um, but it serves the purpose of if someone wants to contact me, my numbers there, my email, and, um, and then hopefully they can get a sense for what my personality is like and, um, and what I can offer. And, uh, so I I haven't done too much with it, and I've been thinking about incorporating more um, training tips, kind of like what I just talked about. Um, it's been more just kind of like this is what I'm doing, the success of my students, success of my horses, and um, uh, just have some sort of presence. But I think I might try to incorporate some other elements into it and hopefully eventually have a website. Love it. Well, hopefully we will, the, our, this show will go on your blog and we wish you all the best. Yeah. And, uh, thank you. And, and we look forward to hearing about you in the future. Thank you very much for having me on. Well, that was a great tip from Emily. She is just such a great personality and uh, we will have her back on the show and hear how her move goes. Uh, but she's great. And and everyone, we've actually had a really long show today. So we are going to hold the listener questions until next week. So don't worry, we will get back to some listener questions and Facebook shout outs. We always love them. So keep them coming. And uh, guys, I have one show I want to plug uh, for that came out this week. That's uh, the Stable Scoop Radio Show on the Horse Radio Network. It's actually the first show we did on the Horse Radio Network. And every year now, for the past six years, we have done a a Rose Parade preview of all of the equestrian uh, units that are going to be in the Rose Parade this year, coming up on January the 1st. And, of course, the Rose Parade is the most watched uh, parade of any kind in the world. 50 million people watch it from around the world. Wow. Yeah, and there's wow. 3 million people that line the parade route. That's so. In Pasadena, and we had uh, the organi- one of the organizers of uh, from the committee, from the Rose Committee on with us, and also two of the groups that are going to be in the parade were on the show with us. So head on over to Stable Scoop, and you will see the Rose Parade preview episode. It's always a lot of fun. Do you realize that this parade heads off about 8 or 9 in the morning Eastern time, or their time, okay, out on the Pacific in Pasadena, California, they have, the equestrian units all have to get to a highway near Pasadena at 8 o'clock the night before. Wow. And they to start, sta- yeah. they prepare, they stage on that highway underneath an overpass all night long. They have to sleep on the highway. The horses have to spend the night on the highway. They wake them all up at four o'clock in the morning. They have to line up two hours before the parade heads out, and the parade is three hours long. Wow! So basically, they get n- yeah. no idea. It is. It's wow. huge. My horses yep. would die. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they would just lay down. <laughs> Our fancy dancy horses. I'm would... off of yeah, schedule. They do it. <laughs> oh my god, I'm gonna right. die. Yeah. yeah. So next time you complain about going to your horse show, yeah. you know, and have to oh leave god. an hour ahead, uh, it's nothing like being in that particular parade. Jeez. Yeah, not at all. Wow, yeah. very cool. Well, cool. that's. Yeah. I can't wait to hear more about that. That is excellent. A lot of fun. It's one of my uh, bucket list things to go in the parade, but I found out after the parade starts, you can't go to the bathroom, and I don't know if I can last three hours. Oh, yeah, that's a, you are a guy. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't last three hours. <laughs> I said, what do, what do the older people do? She said, there's a lot of depends used in the parade. Okay. Oh. Too much now information. Too much. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> can't handle it. <laughs> well, everybody, you can find our show notes and links to today's guests on our website, dressageradio.com. You can like us on Facebook, just search Dressage Radio Show. Follow us on Twitter at 
Horse Radio. My website is maplecrestfarmky.com and my email is reese at horseradionetwork.com. You can find me at philipparksequestrian.com and my email is philip at horseradionetwork.com. I'd like to thank our sponsors for this week to allow us to put on another great show. And don't forget to check out all the other shows on the Horse Radio Network at horseradionetwork.com. Everybody, keep your heels down and your shoulders back, and we'll talk to you next week.